Hey art students, it's Mrs. Bierman here. I have another project for you for this week. So this week my fourth and fifth graders are going to be working on a falling leaf or falling leaves project. So we're going to be talking about symmetry, same on both sides. We're going to be talking about contours or outlines of leaves. And then we'll also be talking about color. And, I, and here you're going to see the use of analogous colors colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm going to look at this one also. What hopefully you're noticing is that you'll have a choice between cool color leaves or warm color leaves. Or of course you can take it um, your own way and you can use the colors that you'd like to. But I would like you to focus on analogous colors. So you're going to start this project with one of those large sheets of paper that I, that I left for you in your art kit that I sent home for you virtual students. Um, I'm using a 12 by 18 just piece of white drawing paper and what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half lengthwise. Now you're welcome to find some leaf tracers, leaf tracers online. You can search Google Images and you can print out your own leaf tracers. The students here at school are using tracers for some of their leaves and then they have to draw some of their own also. But if you don't have the um, capability of using a printer, you can also go outside and find your own leaves too and you can just use those for tracers. You decide what works best for you and we will go from there. So I'm going to put this screen down so you can see what I'm doing. So I don't have a very large workspace here but what I do have is my piece of paper and I want to make sure I don't cross the center line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my leaf tracers and I'm going to place them so the stems are all going in one direction. So right now my stems are, they're all pointing upward in some way. They don't all have to be exactly the same, but they're all going in generally the same direction. You might only fit three leaves. You may be able to fit four. You can decide for yourself how many you want to fit. I think I'm going to just stick to three leaves for this project. So once you've laid them out how you want them, I suggest taking a pencil, which of course I do not have, but I do suggest tracing them in pencil. I'm going to do it in Sharpie because I don't have a pencil nearby. So I'm just carefully tracing my leaves. Again with the stems all facing in the same direction and I'm going very slowly because I don't have my pencil. I'm using my Sharpie so I don't want to make a mistake. Once I have those three leaves traced and placed on my paper, I am then going to look and see what my white spaces of my paper look like. I don't want tons of empty space. I want it to be filled up. I want to use my space wisely. So I'm going to ask you if you're tracing three leaves, you're going to then draw three of your own leaves. If you're tracing four leaves, then you really only need to do two of your own leaves. So I'm looking at my empty spots and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I want to put a leaf over here. So I'm going to draw myself a leaf. Again, all of my stems are facing in the same direction. I'm gonna do another one over here and they can be really simple leaves. They don't have to be anything fancy. Oops, that's kind of a crazy leaf. So there's my three little leaves. From there, I'm going to add my vein lines. I'd like you to do about from the tip down to about where the stem starts with a diagonal. I'm kind of doing a slight curve to mine. So I'm doing my middle vein line on all of my leaves. And then to keep your life easier, I'm going to just create three vein lines 
on each side of that middle line. And you'll notice that those vein lines connect in the center. I'm gonna do that on my large ones and my small ones. My small ones might only have two. Try not to do more than three on each side. Like I said, it will make your life easier when it's all said and done, trust me, okay? From there, if you have any other empty spaces, you are welcome to do another leaf if you want to. You're also welcome to do some sort of decorative line. So I'm gonna just do a swooping spiral line. I'm gonna thicken that baby up and fill it in. I'm just looking for ways to make it a more interesting composition. So I can do that with different types of lines curvy, swirly, kind of reminds me of like Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night Lines. You certainly don't have to do many. It's just a way for me to fill up a little bit of my space. And when we go and go in with the symmetry, you'll see that it is going to end up making a really cool design. Okay, so that's one side. Now we want to get the exact same design on the other side. Here at school, I have one light box and a light box will work and it actually works really well, but when I only have one and I have 15 kids, it's not the best. So what I'm going to do is once I have this all outlined in Sharpie, which mine was already in Sharpie, but once you have it outlined in Sharpie, you're gonna fold that paper back in half. And then you're going to take this paper and you are going to, let me see if I can take you with me. I'm gonna show you what happens on my light box. So, here's my light box, can you see it? When I put this paper on my light box, you should be able to see the design through there. Can you? Let's see, yep, you can see it through there. So I'm gonna go through it, I'm gonna trace all of those lines. Now, I don't suspect that you have a light box at your house, so what you can do instead is you can take this paper and you can hold it up to a window and you can then see the design through there as well. So that once you trace that, you're going to have two perfect symmetrical sides when you are all done. So I don't have one done just in pencil, but if I look at this, I will notice that when I fold this in half, it's a perfect mirrored image that's what you're going for okay so I will show you that when we start the next video for part two so finish up part one that's going to be what we're working on this week in art class go ahead and finish that and then you can check back to our Google slides and I will show you parts two and three when you're ready you will need oil pastels for part two and watercolor paints for part three so enjoy doing part one and I will see you soon bye